Leaving Kautum National Park behind, we hit the broad gravel road south towards the Boabab route. So we stopped at this brilliant Boabab tree, fallen over. It's part of the Dorsland Trekkers people that trekked through here many years ago in the, I think, 1800s. I'll find out and tell you guys. But we've got some very noisy neighbors here. Um, they, they aren't really, um, a Karin doesn't really like them, but I like bees. And so starts another episode of our adventure. Thank you to our Patreons. It's your support that makes these videos possible. Go to patreon.com forward slash fearless on four wheels and subscribe now. Also, remember to hit that like button, subscribe and hit that bell icon to get notified of all our future adventures. So, um, we are kind of surrounded by bees at the moment. They are water thirsty. Louis has been so nice to do the washing. They must really, really need water. Because as soon as we take any water out, they all over the water. Some people will use it with not So yeah, sh sh shame the poor bees, they must be water stars. Quite telling. The total lack of water made it even more amazing for such a big tree to survive for so long. We also had resident squirrels as neighbors and we laughed a lot as we watched them as they argued about nuts and fruit. This baobab tree is about 2,100 years old. It's 14 meters high and has a circumference of 30 meters. The tree keeps growing although the tree trunk has fallen down a long time ago. The oldest known visitor to the trees was the Dorsland trekkers that visited the area in 1883. Some German police officers also visited and carved their names in the tree in 1891. We met some great Swiss travelers, Max and Rito, at the Boabab tree and spent a brilliant night next to the campfire in the shadow of the giant of the desert. The road was calling us and we took the narrow sand track back to the gravel road and then headed further south. And then we had to make a detour of about 300 kilometers to Grootfontein. And after the fight with the tree in north okay. of Kaudum National Park, we are in Grootfontein at the Vicky's Paddle Shop. Great people, doing great work and um, they are putting the box back. So slowly the um, fight with the trees damage is being repaired. And with the help of a Cuban welder known as La Cucaracha that really knew what he was doing, we had Ufudu back ship shape in no time and we were ready to hit the road again. And we're following the Boabab route south, heading towards Gebarbus. And we just went to have a look at a place called Rolwurm Hollow Tree and we found this lovely campsite with a viewing platform. Yeah. Pretty nice. Yeah. Very unexpected. Looks like a mini campsite there, isn't it? Anybody around? We hope they come around. A bit of a steep climb up for me. I'm not sure I'm gonna take the hand. This unexpected find also came with a brilliant viewing platform and a view of a big water hole that was teeming with a big variety of bird life. We spent three days camping at Holboom or Hollow Tree campsite, working on our bird life knowledge. Because of the dry area, the water was a big draw card and there was an extremely big variety of all types of birds. Camping along the Boabab route was another highlight of our time in Namibia. As the campsites were neat and well designed, there was a bucket shower and a nice long crop toilet at each side. You only had to bring your own water, as water is very scarce in this area. But far too quickly our extra month in Namibia was coming to a close and we had to keep moving south. For three months in Namibia we never saw any snakes, but in this one day on the road we saw some great snakes. Green found them quite scary, but I love the agility and the beauty of snakes. We had to visit the 
Kouros crater again, the only place that we visited twice on our time in Namibia. The solitude and the beauty of the crater called us again. Karin could hike up the crater again and go and look for some crystals. Unfortunately, we slowly saying goodbye to Namibia as we heading south. We camping at Kouros crater, and we've got a little tradition at Fearless on four wheels. Because we don't really spend money on clothes, we rather spend our money on travel. I've worn this little t-shirt in its chops. It's a Fearless on Four Wheels t-shirt. If you'd like to order some, just contact us on, on social media. And I've really worn it in its mood. It took me quite a few years to get it done. It's nice quality. Um, so send us a message if you'd like to order one. And we can see what we can do. It depends where we are or whether we can do that. But we've got a little tradition when we say goodbye or at the end of an event of the end of a trip and our clothes are worn to tatters, we'd like to burn them to say thank you for the good service. So, thank you Namibia, thank you T-shirt. And we will definitely be back. But much too soon it was time to head to the South African Namibian port. And today we are saying thank you very much and goodbye to Namibia. After three and a half months in, in Namibia and uh, two months in South Africa along the west coast, we have to slowly head back to South Africa today. So thank you Namibia, there's so many reasons to love you. We love number one the people, we made new friends, we met old friends, strangers became friends and helped us along the way. So that is my number one reason to love Namibia. In the wide open spaces, the brilliant sunrises, the brilliant sunsets, the stars, the moons, the color of the moons, the different moon rises. Um, yeah, and the silence in the desert was just amazing. So thank you very much, Namibia. There's one thing I will not miss. MTC coverage with its E H O H H H O. What's the other one? It's all the same. 3 G. <laughs> it's all the same. And if the wind blows, it's gone. Uh, but it did a good to not have so much coverage. The social media addiction uh, was tested. And there was a bit of troll systems, which I think is a good thing. That's not from Louis' side. Yes. He got the withdrawal. And another thing to thank Namibia for me is the fact that I've learned a lot more about my car in the last uh, four months than I learned in all the years with, uh, previously. Um, and the lovely roads that we could travel, all the interesting and fascinating roads, which did um, break my car a little bit. But that, but that is part of the adventure. So thank you for, for thank you, Namibia, for teaching me a lot about my car and how to fix it. As we said, the people were basically the most outstanding. We had to hooking up with old friends around the fire again, or people we met and who were willing to help us when we were stuck somewhere. Um, particularly thinking of the bins. Um, again, Namibia's. Tree life, nature, animals, this is such a big country, you, it's one of the few countries where you can just drive into a riverbed or up a crater and stay there for a few days, We're thinking of Kukaros and um, Ukaap River. Our knowledge of bird life increased by 2000%. We can now say they, that those are um, lovebirds. <laughs> love birds. Sociable weavers. <laughs> we know it's social weavers. Um, yeah, uh, baobab trees, quiver trees. Now yeah, that's all I can think of now. And so starts our next adventure. Um, we will now be heading east uh, through Johannesburg, visiting friends and family, and then we're going to show you guys what it's like to stay for a whole month in the Kruger National Park. So be sure to come back and see our next adventure. But that's a story for another time. So please remember to 
like, subscribe and hit that bell icon so you won't miss out on future adventures. Thank you for our Patreons for making these videos possible.